Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is Friday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by our sponsor of DTMZ, the Whistler Golf Club. DTMZ coming up uh, in a bit. Well, this is uh, this is special. It's, it's the first time we've had Dave on the show. Yep. Longtime Vancouver reporter, uh, talk show host, you name it, in broadcasting. He, he's done it all. Uh, the Canucks in big, big trouble these days, so who better to talk to about that than Big Daddy uh, David Pratt, my old partner. David, thanks so much for doing this, sir. How are you? Looking good? Good, good brother. Good. Uh, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Dave, uh, the, the Canucks lose uh, last night. We all know where they stand right now. How would you compare uh, what the Canucks went through uh, last night uh, versus Doyle Brunson and the World Series of <laughs> Poker back in the day? I can't believe you got that in in the first 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> People are asking for it. So what goes through your mind, Dave? What goes through your mind when you watch the Canucks these days? People want to know. Okay, let's let, let's talk hockey. That Doyle Brunson. Okay. okay, good stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think the, the headline in the Vancouver province is what he said at all. It's going to take a miracle for them to make the playoffs. And that's exactly what's going to have to happen. It, it, it is what it is. We're at the halfway point, 41 more games to go. Um you know, what you saw in the Tampa Bay game was probably uh, everything you need to know about what this team has been about all season long. They find all sorts of different creative ways to lose hockey games. And at the end of the day, um, there's going to be another shakeup when it's over. But uh, in terms of making the playoffs, to me, that party's over. Who do you blame for their struggles, Dave? Ownership, management, players? Who's to blame? Well, I think it's a combination of all three um, in one degree or another. But at the end of the day... Um, you really do have to point a finger at uh, at management. I mean, that you take a look at ownership and the amount of money that they're spending on this team. It's not that, you know, Francesco Arcolini has been afraid to go and write a check. He has been more than willing to do that. And uh, when you go take a look at the decisions that have been made um, and what they've got to deal with right now, this team on paper should be a lot better than they are, but they're not, and they're not going to make the playoffs, and there's going to be a shakeup. But uh, if, if I'm going to point a finger at anybody, I would uh, I would point a finger at management. Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvine come into Vancouver, and I think the problem that a lot of people have, Dave, and I, I want to get your take on this, yeah. they just they remind people of the previous regime, Jim Benning, John John Wise brought, and that's what people have a really, really big problem with, is that it seems like nothing has changed, despite the fact there have been changes at the management level. Sure, because you can't fast track it. And again, it gets back to ownership in that respect. Um, they want to win and they want to win now. And there are no shortcuts to it. The only one way that you can go and win a Stanley Cup is through the draft. You have to draft well, and we know the whole history of the Vancouver Canucks with the draft. I mean, we could be here for about five or six shows going over and over again. But at the end of the day, that's the way you win a Stanley Cup. And it's uh, it's the willingness to go and go through the pain that's necessary to go and build a championship team through the draft. It sounds like something you know that you've heard before and it's a repeating you know record and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But at the, at the end of the day, until they're willing to go and pay that price, uh, we're not going to see a parade. It's 50 years and counting. Mm -hmm. Tick tock. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Uh, Dave, lots of heat on the ownership. Oh boy, you you yeah. you covered this yeah. team many years. The Griffiths family. Now we're over to Aquilini, oh, uh, the John McCaw era. You covered that. What about uh, the ownership right now, Dave? Your thoughts on that? Well, look, I know Francesco Aquilini very very well. Uh, he wants to win. Do not kid yourself. Francesco Aquilini really really wants to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, the issue becomes more one of the patience that's required to go and get it done. And uh, when, when you see the fast tracking, it's a little frustrating. Uh, but you know what? At the end of the day, um, a decision has to be made in terms of the commitment. And you're right about ownership. It has to come from ownership. It is not about management. It's not about the players. Until that level of commitment to go and deal with the pain, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. before, the pain, yeah. um, you're not going to get the parade. It's just that simple. 
Uh, Dave, 11 years, it's been a tough, tough time. And um, I, w- I wish you were on the air to talk about the last four <laughs> or five years. But uh, uh, are you surprised it's been this long since 2-11 and we still haven't seen a winner? No, not at all. It's just it's a movie that we've seen. I mean, hard to believe it. I mean, I have been, maybe I shouldn't just throw this out there, but I've been doing this for 50 years yeah. in the business. 50 yeah. years. And Donnie, you're not far behind me. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for that, Dean. <laughs> I wanted to share that. I've got my gray hair. You've got your gray hair. But, you know, and, and somebody said to me 50 years ago, oh, yeah, 50 years from now, you'll yeah. still be talking about the team that never won a Stanley Cup. I would have said, come on, you got to be kidding. Uh, especially the way that we have seen, especially with, you know, the, the way the game is played, the speed, the youth, all of it goes along. Uh, yeah. It doesn't take as long to go and get to a Stanley Cup championship as it used to okay um but nevertheless even though the business and the game has changed the end result for canuck fans is still the same they're just standing on the sidelines waiting for the parade and they're tick tock they just keep on waiting i i can't imagine you being i can't imagine you being on the air and jim rutherford publicly ripping into the way uh Bruce Boudreau structures his team and, and not just doing it once, but, but, but three times that I can think of what, what's your opinion of the way management has treated a Bruce Boudreau, a coach that had a lot of success last season. Well, again, it, it, it gets back to the attachment of blame. Um, so there's a lot of ass covering that goes along with it. And if you understand the politics of the dance, um, you don't have to be in, in professional hockey. You can be in media too. I mean, you, you and I have seen that act. So we know how that movie has has its unhappy ending. Um, I think the classy example of, of what we're looking at right now is Bo Horvat. Let's let's get into this. Yep, I mean, yep. if you want to go focus on one particular issue that really speaks for where this organization is at. It's Bo Horvat. Um, he's about to become an unrestricted free agent. How is that possible? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- this guy has become the face of your franchise. Uh, he is the leader of this team. Um, and yet, nevertheless, um, come trade deadline, everybody is talking about the fact that he's probably going to get moved. And the possibility is, is that he could get traded to Boston. Now, ask yourself one thing. Yeah. What is what is Bo Horvat going to look like in a Boston Bruins jersey? And how well is that going to go over with these fans who, again, have been sitting there waiting TikTok? Uh, but nevertheless, this is a very real possibility. So mark it down. Uh, the NHL trade de- deadline is March the 3rd, as you know. And by that date, Bo Horvath could be a Boston yeah. Bruins. Yike. Yeah. Yikes. The, 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 there is talk of him, about him going to Boston, yeah. Colorado, the Rangers. Yeah. Did they make a mistake? And you've seen J.T. Miller's act, a great hockey player, but you've oh. seen his act as a, as a teammate and what he does back-checking. Did they make a mistake committing long-term to him? That's it. That What you just said is long-term. Uh, J.T. Miller is a good player. He can help you. But to make that level of commitment, uh, when you go take a look at your your ability or inability to manage the cap, because cap management right now is everything. Mm-hmm. If you can't manage your cap um, and make sure that the money that you're investing in these players to that cap uh, gets you the, the results, not only short-term but long-term, you're just simply not going to win a championship. And JT Miller is, is, is one of those players. It, it's a short-term solution with a long-term you know side effect that can affect this team for a very, very long time. Um, but again, it gets back to the patience that's required. Uh, you can't fast track it, and that's what JT Miller is all about. It's a fast track. Dave, we grew up with new uh, TV, newspapers, radio. I remember the good days with Neil McRae, Tony Gallagher, all yes. that stuff. It's different yes. now. It's changed. I don't know how you would be in today's Twitter podcast world. Oh. It's, it's changing, Dave, right before our eyes. It's changing, but it's not changing, okay? Um, you go take a look at um, the one key factor in the entertainment business that you have to have to have success. You have to be able to go and and get that emotional investment. And I don't care if it's Hollywood going to go see a movie or whether it's going to see the Canucks play a hockey game. You want to be entertained. You want to be emotionally invested. And you have to know how to stir the pot. It isn't any more complicated than that. Um, the... The problem with the media right now, as as we have seen, is that it's very corporate. It's black. We grew up in yeah. an era. Yeah, we grew up in an era 
where the media was family owned businesses. That's it. That's what it. What a difference. And now okay. it's Toronto. Toronto. The suits in Toronto, Dave. They're killing us. <laughs> They're killing everybody. But uh, I mean, I can remember, you know, when um, Brian Burke took a run at me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I went down to uh, the hall to our general manager and said, look, Brian Burke has picked a fight. And I want to run with it. I want to go after him. I, I think we can really do something. <laughs> and the response was, are you sure? <laughs> and I said, yeah, because we're in the entertainment business. Talk radio is entertainment. And he's picked a fight out of nowhere. Yeah, Thank fights you. are entertaining. Uh, yeah. All right. For 1040, uh, before they shut it down, okay, that was the defining moment because at the end of the day, that fight that was created and the entertainment value that we got out of it was magnificent we went oh. to number one mm -hmm. and then yeah. get the phone call from jennifer yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jennifer who was there. at cknw at the time i mean what the <laughs> hell was that all about yeah. <laughs> my producer said jennifer burke is on the way she wants to come on the show do you want to do it and i said let me go check first went down the hall you bet came back and that piece with jennifer it's gold burke, it's gold the greatest piece of, of radio sports talk radio great radio history. great radio and, and the most important thing we did was shut up and let her talk <laughs> yeah. and, and talk yeah. she did yeah um dave we're getting a lot of uh text into the laney's okay tyron langley inbox people want to know what you're up to these days before we let you go waiting for the phone to ring yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh it's going to be interesting to see how this industry changes it's uh, hard to believe three years has gone by mm. since the, down 10 40. um <laughs> And what this market needs um, is, again, another real uh, sports talk radio station that is going to go and do what we did at 1040, which is to stir the pot and not be corporately involved and just, you know, toe the party line. It's boring, it's dull, and nobody listens. No. Mm -hmm. The one thing that we did at 1040 <laughs> was everything that we had learned out of American sports talk radio, yep. which is stir the pot. There's a reason that Howard Stern makes the money that Howard Stern makes, okay? Because he knows how to go and really get it right in your face. And that's what we did, and that's why it succeeded. That's what we're missing. It's entertainment and not not afraid to be the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and nobody did it uh, better than you. But uh, yeah. you're a, you're an uh, uh, out of work, and you know, Steel and Vance, uh, oh, yeah. Donnie and Dolly. You're an uh, uh, out of work older broadcaster who probably comes cheap. It's just a matter of time before you get a call from Check Dave. Yeah. We, we all okay. did. So to keep that in mind, all right? 10 to midnight. Get ready. 10 to midnight. Yeah. Hold on for a second, Rick. What do you think of this? Pratt and Taylor. No. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Hey. It's, it's never going to work. Never He's up work. there, pal. He's up there, hey, pal. Now I got to worry about uh, having called Steel and Vance older. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About that. yeah. I'm in big trouble. Dave, we're gonna get you on again soon. All right, it's been too long. That's good, brother. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, All right, uh, broadcasting legend uh, David Pratt. Well, getting a call from Check as we speak. We get to work, and and his shift would not start till three o'clock, Dave's, and at ten forty he'd be in there at nine thirty. Donnie, just, just mm. pen, handwritten no, notes, no, nothing folks, nothing, 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 just on a pen and paper. And he'd just go for like five hours, do all his research, three o'clock bang. Uh, he put in the time, the effort. He's what all sports radio is supposed to be. Not everybody gets the format. Nobody, not everyone understands it. And Lord knows uh, the 1040 did it right. But I'm going to tell you something right. The 1040 did not it right because end. of guys like him. Uh, agreed. Again, our thanks uh, to, to David Pratt. He talked about uh, Jennifer Burke and uh, oh. his conversation with her. I was kind of involved in that, but it was mostly Dave wow. and, and, and Jennifer. Um, he talked about that being a defining moment. There was another one uh, with Dave and myself, and we're going to go to break uh, with it. All those years ago, I think over 10, 10 years ago, uh, this is Dave and I, uh, as we go to break, discussing the merits of poker. Tell you what you do, Don. Go down, go down to Vegas and get into a poker so tournament you're saying, and hang Dave, in there. You're for, saying, no, no. Let me finish. Where's the physical? Let me finish, Dave. Where's the physical element in poker? Where's the physical? Where is it? The physical where element of poker is connected to being there day in, day out, and Sitting slugging it up on your ass. Sitting on your ass, being mentally alert. Where's the physical tough, oh. element, Dave? 
the physical element, the, the demand on in a poker tournament, in a major poker tournament, is overwhelming. To be able to, to hammer that up. What are you doing physically? You're, you know, what you're doing is you're sucking it up Open. between 18 Give out, me the 12. physical element. Here it is. If you'd listen, I'll tell you. Between 12 to 18 hours, you're, you're, sitting, you're sitting there sitting. slugging it out. You just said sitting. Sitting, slugging you. it out. You've just made my Sitting point. there slugging it out eight between 12 to 18 hours a day, day after day, to win the toughest prize in sports. And you can do this at 76. Doyle Brunson is an absolute yeah. legend. And Dave, you you're the first person in the world oh, to Don, use the... Don, you have, Dave, you're, let you're me speaking finish from here. a position Dave, of complete Dave, ignorance. Complete ignorance, I know Don. what I see, Dave. You, you haven't done it. You, you so you the, haven't you, done you, it, but you can know. Can I finish, but buddy? Okay, so you've been at the British Open, have you? Dave Pratt, the first guy to use the word sitting and uh, slugging it out uh, in the same sentence. Now he's left the studio. Let's take a break.